If you want your slides to flow like a pro level presentation, then I'm going to show you today how to use the Magic Move feature on Keynote for Mac in just a few minutes. I've designed hundreds of presentations for workshops, webinars and lessons and Magic Move in Keynote is my superpower for creating that wow factor in presentations. I've tested loads of different layouts, transitions and tweaks to find out what looks really good on screen. So you don't have to spend ages working this all out. Today I'm going to show you how to create smooth and dynamic animations automatically without any complex tools or spending hours on your presentations. So if you're a teacher, designer, founder or anyone who wants to level up their presentations, this one's for you. By the end of this video, you'll be able to get your slides from static and stiff to smooth and cinematic without needing any design background. And if you're still clicking through clunky and flat transitions, then your slides could be hurting your message rather than helping it. Don't let boring design distract from your ideas and instead let your slides add that extra sparkle to your presentation. All right, so let's have a look at how Magic Move works straight away. And uh, I'm gonna go here into the shape section. There's loads of uh, shapes here that you can choose from. We'll explore how some of these can be used really creatively with Magic Move later on. But let's stick with a circle. So I'm gonna add a circle, this uh, white one here. Just move it over to the side of the screen. You see I'm still keeping it in the middle just so it's gonna be a nice horizontal movement in a moment. I'm gonna copy that circle and add it to the next one here. And I'm just gonna drag it across to the other side here. Still keeping it on that yellow line, so keeping it perfectly aligned in the middle. And then I'm going to add this magic move animation. So you'll see up here in the top right, this animates tool. Uh, and I'm going to add an effect click on magic move and it will show you a preview once you've done that. So you can see how that works. It's moved the circle from the position it was in slide one to the position it is in slide two with a really nice smooth motion. Uh, and that's because we've got this kind of ease in and out tool set here, which means that it moves a bit slower to start with. It slows down at the end of the animation as well, which makes it look a bit more natural. Uh, we can change that to ease in only, which means it just accelerates slowly and then gets quicker or ease out, which means that it slows down towards the end of the animation. But I'm gonna keep it on this. I'm gonna keep it on ease in and out. Uh, we can change the duration of that as well if we want to make it a bit faster. Uh, and then we can obviously see how that looks in the slideshow mode as well. So here's slide one. If I click to the next slide, we've got that motion into slide two using Magic Move. So you can start using this right at the beginning of your next presentation. And I'm going to show you just uh, an example kind of transition into my second slide after this title page. So let's say we're doing a presentation on Magic Move and this is our title. I'm going to take that title, I'm going to copy it again and paste it onto my next slide where I've got my name, where I can introduce myself. And I'm just going to make that touch smaller and drag it up to the corner here. So like we did with the circle, I've moved the position, I've changed the size and now it's gonna just go up to the top because that's not the focus of this next slide, although I still want to keep it there. And obviously the next thing is to add the Magic Move transition. So let's add the effect, uh, Magic Move. Again, we'll see a preview of that. Now it's a little bit slow at the moment, so I'm gonna just speed that up to one second instead of two seconds. And let's play that preview again. There we go, that's much better. So um, that you'll see that my image kind of appears gradually. Now that's what happens if we if we don't have something on the first slide that then appears in the second slide, Magic Move just kind of uh, automatically makes it fade in. The other aspect of this is my name that slides up from the bottom. Now that's because on my uh, title slide here, you might have seen my name is hiding down there at the bottom. It's still the same size, I've not changed the size, but it's just, I've dragged it down there so it's off screen when I present the slides. And then when I change the slide into the next one, then that name moves up. Oh, I did make it bigger, there we go. So we're just expanding that a little bit as well to create that really nice effect. So that could be the start of your presentation um, using Magic Move straight away to capture your audience's attention. Okay, so another way that you could use Magic Move is to create contrast. And I'm gonna show you a really simple example here. Again, just using a single shape from the shapes library here at the top. And I've got a light bulb at the moment. I've made it gray, I've made the background black to simulate a kind of a, a light bulb that's switched off. And you can see here on my next slide that the light bulb is going to light up. Now, all I've changed here is the color of the background here on the format tab, here, down here, and the color of the light bulb to make it look like it's brightening. Um, again, I've got that magic move effect on. If we preview it, you can just see that gradual change from dark to light. So we're creating contrast 
uh, using this magic move feature. Really powerful, really simple. Here's another way that you could do that. Again, just using one shape. This time I've made one change, which is to rotate the shape as well as the color of the background. So if we play this slide, you'll see the shape rotates, the background changes, creating that contrast again. And if I just show you how I did that really quickly, this is the shape again from the shapes library up here. Uh, if we just, oh, not cycle, maybe recycle, there we go. So it's this one here. And uh, I'm just gonna copy it onto the next page. So at the moment, if I just kept it like that, only the background would change like this. Uh, but you'll see that I rotated it as well. So if you hold command on your keyboard, you'll see that rotate arrow appear. And I'm just gonna rotate it around to like 270. And let's see how that looks when we play it. So here's the original slide. The next one, great. So we've got that effect of something's changed, the, the icon has rotated and the background's changed at the same time. So here are some more examples of manipulating objects, moving objects, rotating them to create that effect. Uh, so here's a hammer that bang, when it moves, the background changes. You'll notice here that the background didn't change gradually like it did before. It's, it's a bit more of a sudden effect. Um, and that's because here in the uh, build order, I've got this rectangle. So this is this is the background. This time I used a rectangle so I can make it appear straight away. You'll see it there, it says appear. After the transition, delay is zero seconds, so it happens straight away. So when the, when the hammer reaches its destination, then bang, the background changes. Here's another one, just a simple timer effect, again, from the shape library. And just, you could rotate that. And what you could also do as well is uh, break apart that shape so that you can move this aspect to move down to the bottom, rotate it, etc. Uh, I'll talk about break apart in a moment. So here we've got two icons. I've got this uh, weight icon here and I've got the uh, scales here at the bottom. Now you'll notice that the scales isn't all one icon at the moment. It's, it's kind of split up into different parts, um, which is using that break apart feature. So here in uh, shapes, if I just search for scale again and add it, uh, just show you how that works. So if you right click, you've got this break apart option here. And once you've done that, each aspect of that icon is separate. So I could change the color, I could change uh, the size, where it is on the screen, etc. Which means that I can create uh, an effect, something like this, where the weight drops and the scale, the arrow on the scale moves around the dial. So all I've done there is just change the position of the weight from top to bottom. Um, and I've broken apart the shape, so, so the dial is separate, and I've just, for the second slide, rotated it round a bit. So you can get really creative with this, and if you break apart different objects, you can start to experiment uh, with some more kind of advanced um, magic move transitions. So let's see another example of how we could break apart an object and transform it this time into something else. So this is uh, obviously a power icon from the shape library, and as I go through this transition, you'll see that I've rotated it to start with, and then I've transformed it into something else. Now, if we just take it back a moment, I'll just talk you through this. So this is uh, just the power icon on its own. I've rotated it there, but on the next slide here, I've broken it apart. You'll see here that there are, there are two parts to this, and I've used that break apart feature uh, by right-clicking, break apart, and it's now two parts. And then the next step is to move that line across. And what I've done there is I've brought this, arrow, uh, this line down from the top of the screen. So it was hiding up here at the top. And that means that when we use the magic move tool, it comes down, I've changed the color so that it's that um, kind of gradual slide into it. So let's see. So here it is, we rotate, I've clicked the next slide there, so now it's broken apart, although as the, as the viewer, you can't see that. And then that line drops down and we transformed it into something else. So here's another way we could transform a shape using that break apart feature. Now this is the uh, battery icon from up here. And again, I've broken it apart. So it's now two separate parts. It's the outline on the outside and the fill in the middle. I've changed the fill to green to represent a full battery. And on the next slide, um, it's an empty battery. So let's just, show how that works. So I'm gonna delete that slide and let's just start over. So let's duplicate that slide. So we've now got this same thing again. Now, if I try and make this smaller, you can see what happens that all the 
uh, proportions stay the same, which is not what we want. We want to change that. So I'm going to go to this um, format tab here um, onto arrange and I want to untick constrain proportions, which means that I can expand it in one dimension, not the other. So we can drag that right down to almost empty and then we can change the color as well to make it red. In fact, I'll make it a little bit smaller. So now when we use that uh, magic move transition from up here, again, we've got this uh, transformation of the shape from this to this. And these little things can really just add a really nice engaging element to your presentations. And you could use this for displaying dynamic data as well. So you could show um, a graph being transformed from uh, one thing to another. So this is a just a simple uh, graph icon. Again, I've broken it apart so I can change the different elements and I can change the elements in terms of size and in terms of color, and we can create that nice transition there. Here's a pie chart. Again, broken the, the shapes apart and I've just added something a little bit extra there, which is another shape underneath uh, that has uh, that kind of dotted outline as well. So I've darkened that, I've expanded the original part of the, the pie chart and again just makes it a bit more engaging for the viewer. And there are a few powerful ways to show like scientific concepts with this tool as well. So you could uh, represent dispersion for example from this to this. Again all I've done is just change the position of the shapes, they're all just individual circles and on the second slide I've moved and spread them out so that it goes um, from being very close together to spread out like this. And we could do the same for other scientific processes like states of matter, changing states from solid to liquid to gas. So all I've done here is change the color of the circles, change the position of them, and then we've got this text here which is um, changing as well. And all I've done there is just change the size and the color of each one and Magic Move does the rest. One more example, a bit more complex, had a bit of fun making this one. So this is the, the water cycle. Um, and this is just really simple shapes, rectangles, circles, uh, icons from the, the shape library here, just search for mountain. Um, again, rectangles. What I'm doing here is showing the process of the water cycle. So I've gone from this slide to this one, first of all, to show evaporation. Um, and all I've added here is this, uh, this text these lines which actually come from the shape library. This was this waves icon that I broke apart like this and then separated a little bit. Uh, and then the clouds and the sun. I've got that evaporation text hidden off screen again here. So it just rises up from the bottom. And if we just continue through that process, so it starts with evaporation. I've changed the cloud color from white to gray. Move that cloud over to above the mountains, added the rain and the water on the ground. And that's a great start. And you could continue with that. You could, you know, add groundwater and, and get really creative with that process. And there's so many scientific processes that you could have fun creating using this, uh, this, this feature, this Magic Move feature. So now you've seen what Magic Move is capable of, you can try adding it to your next presentation and see how you get on. There are so many creative uses of this and you can let me know in the comments how you've been using Magic Move to create really powerful presentations. If you wanna see more of this type of content, then please do hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate every subscription. And I'm also linking the slides from this video in the description below so you can have a go at using Magic Move in those fun, creative ways. And if you'd like to receive some top tips for using technology in the classroom straight to your inbox, then you can subscribe on my website, primaryedtech.com.